be waiting. You are looking at six foot two, twenty-five senior defensive end Corey Moore, the pride of Brownsville, Tennessee, and he was on it early, sacking Streeter. Clemson would miss a field goal two plays later. Later first quarter, 7-0 Hokies. More, more, and that's not being redundant. Gets to Brian Wofford for a nine-yard loss. Clemson had 17 yards rushing. Not good. Second quarter, Michael Vick back from those leg issues in the opener. Runs up the option for a 31-yard gain. It would set up a touchdown. Vick 41 yards on 12 carries. Moments later, Clemson has the ball, and that's not a good sign because Jamel Smith just drills Wofford. Hokies led 14-3 at the half. Now, fourth quarter, Clemson down. They have to go for a fake field goal. Tony Lazara to Vince Churchu for the touchdown. Two-point conversion is good. It's a three-point game. Late in the fourth, Clemson with the ball down 17-11. Streeter, oh, he's picked off by Ike Charlton. 34 yards later, that's in the house. 23-11, Hokies up. So why did he throw the pick? Because Corey Moore was on him like, oh! covering him completely and if that wasn't enough moments later more to Streeter hi have we met sack fumble fumble recovery touchdown a career in one play Hokies roll 31 11 more finished with five tackles and two sacks Chiron stiff with 162 order East Carolina at the 27 down three points under five minutes and that's David Garrard he's got Keith Stokes and Keith Stokes has got what it takes Garrard 20 of 27 222 yards Butch Davis's team has blown a 20-point lead. They're trailing. Third and 15 at the 22. Kenny Kelly still has a chance. Looking for Santana Moss. Doesn't have him. 15 of 37, 159 for Kelly. And here's his last chance. Fourth and 15. Kelly in the end zone, and there's nobody there. Kelly would say later he could not describe his disappointment. Butch disappointed as well. The East Carolina fans, meanwhile, ecstatic. School is out till at least Wednesday, so they have plenty of time to celebrate. And celebrate they do, and justifiably so. Second straight week, the Hurricanes allow a team to come from behind. They lose by the identical score as they lost the Penn State game. Third quarter, Penn State up 14, and Richard Casey is unbelievable. He did it with his hands and his feet on this day. He goes for 31 of his 66 wow. rushing yards here. There's a touchdown. He would lead Penn State to 31 points, all of their offensive touchdowns. Here comes seven more of those. Fourth quarter, their lead was two scores already. Casey back to throw. All kinds of trouble. He was 13 out of 15 for 196 on the day, and that touchdown, he would also throw another. Sam Crenshaw caught that one of the spectacular variety. And Penn State celebrates a 45-24 win. They beat the Hoosiers for the fifth straight time. Antoine Randall L, 11 of 23, 204 yards, ran for 67 more. For both schools, there's Barry now. They got a good look at this. First quarter, Michigan up seven zip ball in their 45. A little double reverse action from the Wolverines. David Terrell. Terrell finds a seam, and we'll see him later. He also caught seven balls for 88 yards. Michigan up 14 zip. Second quarter, Wisconsin driving. Scott Cavanaugh looking for Chris Chambers, who missed the last two games with a broken hand. Oh, that'll hurt as well. Drops the sure touchdown. Wisconsin had to settle for the field goal, 14-3. Give it to Ron Dane, and Ron Dane does what he does best, just bouncing off people, even his own guys. A 34-yard score. He had 88 in the first half and zero on eight carries in half two. The extra point blocked. Wisconsin down 14-9. Tom Brady looking for Marcus Knight. Check out this catch over the wrong shoulder. Brady 17 of 27, Michigan up 21 to 9 as that led to a score. Fourth quarter, Brooks Bollinger scrambling, check out the move right there, and he'll get in for the score. Wisconsin down just 21-16. They go for the onside, hands team, they send in Anthony Thomas, the tailback, and the A-train hauls it down, and Michigan holds on 21-16. The Wolverines win their 18th straight Big Ten opener. Mummy talking with his QB, Dusty Bonner. I doubt they drew it up like this. Dougie Allen meet Daryl Dixon. Ouch. First quarter, no score. Bo Carroll straight to the house. Florida takes the seven-zip lead. Still seven-zip, second quarter. Quarterback Doug Johnson just drops it on Daryl Jackson's fingertips. 49-yard score, Gators up 14-zip. Dusty Bonner, Dusty was rusty. Picked off by Benny Alexander. That would lead to another Florida score, and the route was on. The Gators win this one, 38-10. They did lose tailback Ernest Graham to a deep thigh bruise on the second play of the game. No matter, Robert Gillespie. Neil Suber, the Memphis quarterback, looking deep. Dwayne Goodrich, check out this pick. The incredible interception. Please take one more look. Goodrich can juggle. Finally locks it up, just holds it to his hip for the pick. 
13-10 Memphis. Third and 41 for Tennessee. Not many plays work on third and 41. The pick there, Fred Powell takes it back. T. Martin's only interception of the day. It was 16-10 Memphis. Same score, under two to play. Martin rolling, gets rid of that ball as he gets hit. Bobby Graham catches it and is out at the six-yard line, a 53-yard hookup. After a Tennessee penalty, just over a minute left, Martin looking for Cedric Wilson, who's from Memphis, and Cedric gets into that checkerboard end zone. Tennessee pulls it out, 17-16. The Vols haven't lost two straight games in five. That was one of the last three meetings. A couple of former assistants at the Buffaloes meeting to shake hands before it got started. Second quarter, Washington had taken a 7-0 lead. Ben Kelly didn't like that. Count the tackles he breaks. That's one. That's two. Here comes number three. That's four. And there's number five coming up right there. Kelly now turning on the Jets, and he is gone. 98 yards, longest kick return in school history. Colorado ties it at seven. Then they're showing strong defense. Watch Deshaun Sykes. Says here he comes out of nowhere. Actually, he comes out of the spot shadow. Takes out Marcus Tuiasosopo. That's Ben Kelly, who just returned the kickoff, going for another touchdown. Tuiasosopo turned it over five times last week, twice in the third quarter here, but he was down but not out. Second and goal, Tuiasosopo. Redemption is sweet. That's Chris Jurgens. Huskies had more than 36 and a half minutes of possession time, and they hold on to win. Just the second win in eight games for the Huskies and an emotional first one for Neuheisel, who said afterward, quote, hopefully this will be a turning point for the program. Southern Miss almost beat Nebraska last week. Now they get Texas A&M, and this is Terrence Kitchens' 62-yard field goal, three shy of Tony Franklin's record. It's good. Kitchens, three field goals on the day. That one a 62-yarder. Fourth quarter, Texas A&M up 10. Southern Miss, Cable Davis, not what he had in mind. Michael Jamison is going for a score, one of two defensive touchdowns and four interceptions on the day for the Aggies. They win it. Southern Miss played great defense, too. They held the nation's second-best offense to just 299 yards and no offensive touchdowns, but it wasn't enough. Number five, Nebraska at Mizzou. That's Mike Ostendorf practicing his snap for punts. Practice does not always make perfect. Here we go, first quarter, and that's terrible. Jared Gilpin has got to just knock it out of the end zone for a safety. Nebraska, a 2-0 lead. On the next series, second verse, same as the first. Ostendorf over Gilpin's head again. Gilpin trying a Garroy Premi and wouldn't get him much. Missouri coach Larry Smith would later say, it's simple, we stunk. Third quarter, Nebraska up 16, first and 10 at the 47, Eric Crouch. 53 yards for former quarterback Bobby Newcomb. Crouched through for 143, ran for 92 more, and Nebraska wins in a romp. They win their 100. Oh, first quarter, it's already 21-0 Florida State. Peter Warwick back to field the punt. He'll take it off one hop, cut left, weave through the defense, and start thinking about the Heisman. 75 yards for the score, 28 zip Knowles halfway through the first quarter. Late second quarter, 28-3 Florida State. Chris Winkie for Atrus Bell. Right in his hands, 35-3. Warwick and Bobby Bowden are chums. The Tar Heels lose 42-10. The Knowles lay waste to the state of North Carolina. 42-10 Saturday was 42-11 against NC State a week ago. This was the first time a team had scored four touchdowns in one quarter on North Carolina since Florida did it in 1969. Another good one between Central Florida and number nine, Georgia. Tied at 17, third quarter, third and goal. Quincy Carter rolling and hitting Michael Greer for the score. The dogs up by seven after the kick. Fourth quarter, UCF hanging tough. Vic Penn for Paige Sessoms. UCF within one. All they need is Javier Borleggi to kick the extra point up and doink off the post. Georgia clinging to a one-point lead. Ugga, he goes for another in a series of naps. Under 30 seconds to play. Central Florida within field goal range. Penn for Kenny Clark. A flag is thrown on the play. The refs would confer offensive pass interference is called. The Golden Knights can't believe it. The mascot is glum, everything. The Golden Knights, 421. Sean Alexander, 165 yards on the day. He puts Bama up 28-21. Bama still up seven. Check out this play. Freddie Millens going to take the pitch on the end around from Andrew Zhao. And Freddie chucking it for Jason McCadley. This is a 65-yard hookup. The Tide committed six turnovers, and they still win 35-28. to A nice win for a Bama team distracted by the resignation of A.D. Bob Bachrath and the rumors that Mike DeBose might be next to go. At Purdue, late second quarter, Drew Brees 
up 10-7 and looking for more. But Napoleon Harris has other ideas. That's the first sack of Breeze all year. Third quarter now. Game tied at 17. Breeze. Oy. Kevin Bentley. 40 yards and a touchdown. The point after blocked Northwestern up 23-17. to It wouldn't last. Purdue would retake the lead, clinging to a one-point advantage. Purdue pinned at its own one on a great punt by J.J. Standring. Montrell Lowe barely gets out of the end zone, barely avoiding a safety. Now third and 11 at the one. Breeze would later admit this was not the play they had called, but boy, did it work. Northwestern coach Randy Walker would later say, we couldn't have scripted the defense any better. Coach? We respectfully disagree. That's a 99-yard touchdown to Vinnie Sutherland, the longest play in Purdue's 112 years of football. Breeze 32 of 50. Oregon ball leading by three. A.J. Feely looking for Tony Hartley. And there's Tony now. A 43-yard pickup. Three plays later, Feely to Herman Ho Ching. And he's in. Oregon goes up 20 to 10. It was 2017 with over three minutes to go. Chad Morton, the one-yard touchdown plunge. He's in there. The extra point didn't go. Bad snap. USC right now leading by three with just over three minutes to go. Morton, touchdown runs of one, two, and handicap parking decals. They are subtle. Joe Brochard, the backup QB for Stanford. Look at this. To Troy Walters. Don't forget to write. 98 yards. That a Pac-10 record. Stanford up 28 to three. It got a lot closer. Stanford up by three in the fourth. Brochard for Durrani Pitts. And Durrani vaults in. Brochard comes off the bench and throws for five scores as Stanford wins 42-32 after losing to Texas by... This is Jay Stoner looking for Kofi Shuck. And Kofi Shuck is going 60 yards for a touchdown. Wyoming upsets Air Force 10-7 the final. NC State Wake Forest. Watch the arrow. It's pointing at 305-pound offensive tackle Willie Lamb. Quarterback Ben Sankey rolling to his right, and he's looking for Lamb. He's on the Lamb. A tackle eligible in the end zone for a touchdown. Wake Forest blowing out number 24, NC State, 31 to 7. Mississippi, Auburn in overtime, tied at 17. Romaro Miller under pressure, looking for Corey Peterson. 23 yards touchdown. Mississippi gets an overtime win. 113 yards and two touchdowns for Peterson. Arizona, Washington State, five seconds left in the game, tied at 24. Keith Smith. There's only one option. This is a Hail Mary. And watch Bobby Wade. The prayer is answered. Arizona wins it 30 to 24. Or do they? Watch Wade in the spot shadow. He bobbles the ball. It may have hit the ground, but the call will stand. And Arizona gets the win. Marshall hosting Temple. Second quarter. Marshall up 14-0. And here's that guy we were talking about a moment ago, Chad Pennington. He's looking over the middle for Low Turner. And Lowe is going high, breaking a tackle, getting a block. Marshall wins at 34-0. Pennington throws for 406 and three touchdowns. Boise State, New Mexico, little trickery from the Broncos. Watch Boise State's Greg Sasser in the spot shadow. The ball is snapped to Sasser, who fakes it behind him. New Mexico buys the fake, and Sasser is going. Couple nice blocks downfield, 39 yards on a fake punt, and Boise State wins it 20-9. Elsewhere, Lou Holtz still looking for his first win as... 12 in the fourth quarter, looking for the upset. BYU's Kevin Federick trying to bring him back, buys some time, and then unloads. Shenard Newby deflects it and right to Carlos Nuno for the touchdown. Virginia's lead cut to five. Here we go. Fourth and goal. Last chance for BYU. Federick into the end zone, picked off by Dratan Evans, and Virginia holds on for the upset. 45-40, the final... Virginia's Thomas Jones rushed for a career-high 210 yards. And the Sooners' Josh Heupel throws for five scores and a school record 429 yards. And Illinois, and there's Kurt Kittner finding Elmore Hickman for a one-yard touchdown pass, the only touchdown the Illini could muster. Michigan State would turn the ball over four times, but they would run it strong. 163 rushing yards, including six there for the freshman T.J. Duckett. Two touchdowns on the day for Duckett. 